Okay, so last week we talked about booms and busts in U.S. history, so economic success versus economic decline. And today we're going to talk about the difference between Hoover and FDR's response to that decline um, in the Great Depression. And this government response really translates to how the United States generally responds to economic depressions or recessions uh, in, in time is either they sort of match with Hoover or FDR or some combination of the two. So Hoover is really marked by what we call the Bonus Army. So uh, the Bonus Army were veterans and their families that marched on Washington and lived in these encampments uh, near Washington, basically demanding repayment of their service for World War I. So they marched on Washington and Hoover's response was actually to order the army to bring down this encampment. Uh, and they used tanks and tear gas and actually killed two veterans. These are pictures of that fight between veterans who fought for the United States in World War I uh, and then were immediately told to uh, not fight back against the government who wasn't paying them for their service. And this is a picture of the tanks that were rolling towards the Bonus Army to break up um, the, uh, the march. Um, so his response was basically government do, does not make jobs. Government does not provide money to the people. Businesses do that and it trickles down. So we're going to talk about what trickle down economics means because it's basically the idea that governments help businesses and businesses hire and pay and protect workers, that the, there's not a connection between government and workers, that the connection is really between businesses and workers. So the idea that the government should respond or should help businesses first is really trickled down economics. And it's kind of marked by this uh, song that's about to play. But businesses, while you write down the definition of trickle down economics, um, that businesses must have money and then it flows down to the people. Um, this song sort of represents it. Businesses make money and then they make it rain. Okay, not the most appropriate, but you kind of get the idea. Businesses make it rain, the government does not. Uh, businesses, if government helps businesses, like gives them tax breaks, um, then it'll help the people earn more money, hopefully, if the businesses um, abide by that philosophy. Um, but they have to focus on business first is Hoover's idea of a good economy. Problem is, and this is uh, the main argument in capitalist theory, is that most of the money still stays at the top, that really the money stays for the business with the business owner or management and less and less money trickles down to the workers who are actually creating the product that businesses make money off of. So uh, you really get into the debate over capitalism versus socialism here because businesses don't always help the people in the most direct or efficient way. <clears throat> So this results in foreclosures and Hoovervilles. So foreclosures is the idea that banks take back property after a loan isn't paid back. So if usually um, a farmer or a family might take out a loan to pay for their home or property, and um, if you don't pay back your loan, you can foreclose and the bank takes away your home. Um, and this skyrocketed in the Great Depression. So we can see here that the numbers are increasing in the total number of foreclosures. This results in Hoovervilles. Uh, so these are shanty towns created by those who are destitute or lost their home and resources during the Depression. And this really starts the argument that we need a new pres president to uh, change these economic conditions. So farmers, just to summarize that, 
Farmers took out loans, and when the Depression hit, they couldn't pay them back. This caused banks to foreclose on homes, and farmers were homeless. Many moved to shanty town, shanty towns excuse me, called Hoovervilles. So there was really um, a change in idea of what a president should do. So on, I should have put it on the left there, but Hoover really represents the safe candidate. Play it safe with Hoover. Hoover helps business bring back prosperity with a Republican vote. He is the safe candidate, right? Hoover really represents the safe candidate. So I think that this question is at the top of the right-hand column under the Roosevelt side. Um, so what do the campaign pins represent? Hoover is safe and Hoover helps businesses, right? Versus Roosevelt, who is for humanity and for a new deal. He's go he is the change candidate. He represents something new that he will kick out the depression if you vote Democrat. Uh, who won? Uh, I think it should be quite obvious through this map that Roosevelt had a landslide victory um, in nearly every state in the nation. So Roosevelt won. So let's talk about his economic theory. So Hoover is out, Roosevelt is in. His is the exact opposite economic theory. We call his the trickle up economic theory. So that actually governments have to help workers and people first. This is the new deal. Uh, when the economy is down, we must use the government to directly help the people, and then this will eventually trickle up. So you could think about this in terms of the stimulus checks that were provided to um, Americans the last couple weeks, right? That um, since a lot of people are out of work, the government provided uh, $1,200 to each person um, or additional money for each dependent of those per persons out of work. Uh, there's also more unemployment benefits right now. So this is called trickle up because it's the government providing providing direct funding to the people. So the song sort of demonstrates that idea. Government provides the dollars. And ultimately, by, by providing the workers or the people money, then that helps businesses make money, right? Because, or landlords make money, because now those people can maybe be better able to pay their rent or buy something they need, food, clothing, whatever it might be. So that was, this is the idea of trickle, ec, tri, trickle up economics or Keynesian economics. Part of the New Deal and part of the way the government helped the people was creating specific programs. So the main idea is we have to use the government to directly help the people. So the government being FDR and Congress created organizations like the National Recovery Administration, the NRA, or the CCC, which is the Civilian Conservation Corps, the Tennessee Valley Administration, who that where the Tennessee Valley Valley area was actually the hardest hit by the Great Depression, or the Federal Arts Project, uh, the National Industrial Recovery Act, the Emergency Banking Act. These are all examples of New Deal organizations. So, some of so for instance, the NRA helped establish a minimum wage, fair labor practices, so that workers were protected. The CCC was a work relief program that provided manual labor jobs. The Tennessee Valley Administration um, was help, helped that area control floods or provide electricity in that area. And my personal favorite, the Federal Arts Project funded, art, funded artists to create works for the government. So this is where we see a lot of graphic posters of like national parks and stuff like that, um, where modern artists were actually making money through the government. There was a lot of success, but there were also a lot of failures to these programs. So the main successes is, is that it did help um, create jobs and kept people in their homes instead of on the streets. It lowered crop prices to protect farmers, it did cut employment in half, at least in the first, first four years. 
and people felt confident in their government. They finally felt like the government was doing something to protect them. And it also created the social security program, which we still have today, where some of the money made uh, by the people is set aside for elderly and disabled persons. There were also a lot of failures, so discrimination being one of them. So African Americans were definitely discriminated against in the hiring process and lost their farm jobs. There wasn't really a change in unemployment in the last four years, so unemployment sort of tapered off or remained kind of stagnant and wasn't changing until World War II. And the U.S. government was in a lot of debt. So we weren't without failure um, in this change, this New Deal program, but it was a huge change in the way people saw their government and how the government could control the economy at the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at other examples other than Hoover and FDR, other presidents and administrations that have responded to uh, economic success and decline, such as Reagan and Obama. We might even look at um, some of um, Bernie Sanders', Sanders Bernie Sanders' uh, influence in the economy as well.